Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray in the spirit for just a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You guys are spirit people, right? You guys believe in the spirit of the Lord? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you're here in this place. Lord, that you uh, have answers, Lord, to the questions that are on the hearts and minds of your people, Father. Lord, you are the answer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that tonight you'll manifest yourself to us strongly by your word. Lord, that you would speak to us by the Holy Spirit. Uh, to, Lord, that we would have ears to hear what you have for us. And, Lord, I yield myself to speak clearly your word. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you that tonight... We have a, a, a heart ready to hear, Lord, that we'll lay aside any, any thoughts or distractions of this earth, Father, so that we can hear from heaven tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated, and if you're uh, in, the, in the back, feel free to move on up close. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's good everywhere, I know. And you might be joining us online. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Yeah. Again, as Eric said, my name is Scott Isbell. And um, praise the Lord, I'm solid because he is solid. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise. Glory, glory, glory. You all ready to have fun tonight? Yeah. Well, I hope you have your Bible with you because we have a, a few scriptures to look, look through. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. <coughs> Hallelujah. All right, turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to talk tonight about walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. You know, it's important as members of the body of Christ to walk in the Spirit. And so uh, some that are joining us online or maybe in the room tonight, you might be new to the things of God. And uh, so we're going to kind of start from the beginning and kind of um, explain what that means to walk in the Spirit. Turn with me again to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. And this is Paul writing to the church in Colossus, he says that we might be filled with the knowledge or that ye, everybody say that means me. That means me. Alright, so this letter is not just to them, but it's to us. Amen. Amen. Here Paul is praying, you could say prophesying. This is his desire, he's praying, that you be filled with the knowledge of his will, not Paul's will, but God's will, in all wisdom. Now, how do we know what God's will is? Well, we have his word. This is one way. Amen. And so he says he wants us to know what God's will is. How many of you want to know what the will of God is for your life? Amen. All right. Good. And it says, and spiritual understanding. So there's a lot of things that we can come to understand naturally by reading the word. Yeah. And then even while we read the word in the natural, the Lord can speak to our spirit. So we get a spiritual understanding, okay? Praise the Lord. So uh, we have to understand that there is the natural, he says, wisdom, and then there's spiritual understanding. Amen? Amen. So there's some things that come from God. Would you agree? Amen. All right. So we have to have to kind of start on that basis you know some people don't believe in God <laughs> amen so then this where does the supernatural understanding come from praise the Lord all right well let's just get back to the word here verse 10 that ye so as a result of this understanding and knowledge the spiritual understanding and knowledge verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the Lord Unto all pleasing. Now, I want to walk worthy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Being fruitful in every good work 
and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want to be fruitful and increase in the knowledge of God. Amen. So increasing in the knowledge of God shows that there is uh, is line upon line, precept upon precept. That means that you are uh, increasing, you're growing, right? Kind of like you went to kindergarten, then you hopefully went to first grade and didn't, you know, somebody might have had to take kindergarten again. That's okay too. That's all right, because then you can grow to the next and the next and the next. Amen? Amen. And so growing our understanding is good. That's hopefully why you're here tonight Amen. and why you've tuned in to the, the service tonight is so that you can grow in understanding and then receive supernatural yeah. understanding from the Lord. Amen? Amen? Verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. So this is what happens when we get this uh, understanding when we get to know, well, what is God like? What is the spirit of God like? What's it like to have the, the supernatural working in our life? Verse 11, it says we're strengthened with all might. Yeah. Have you ever not been strengthened? Yeah. And you might felt a little weak. Yeah. Amen. Well, when you get back on to understanding the Lord and his uh, working in, in the spirit, understanding and working in the spirit realm yes. with the Lord, the Bible says you'll be strengthened. This is what Paul is teaching the church, and he's teaching us. Yes. We'll be strengthened with a little bit of might. Oh. No, it says all might. Everybody say all might. All According might. to his glorious power. Yes. Wow, does that sound like just a little bit of something? <laughs> glorious. So there's a glory for us that we can enter into when we have an understanding of his will and when we partner with the, the Holy Spirit and work out the knowledge, the supernatural knowledge, the spiritual knowledge that he has given to us. Amen? Amen. So <clears throat> verse 11, it says, Unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, Praise the Lord. And, and these verses are so full of good uh, understanding. We're, we're, we're going to um, highlight some. So please take your highlighter, take notes tonight. Um, you're going to be um, blessed. Amen? Amen. So it's telling us that we would be filled with knowledge of his wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we have to know that there's something supernatural out there, something God inspired, something God imparted, uh, revelation. Amen. We need to expect this in our life. Amen. And so the church as a whole needs to wake up in the morning expecting supernatural, Amen. expecting Amen. God inspired, expecting Amen. a day yeah. that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Expecting. And you begin to draw on the Spirit like you would from a well. I was, we were teaching children this morning and the teacher in the room used the well as an example. So I was a really good example. I'm gonna use that one. And so uh, she was referring to the gifts of the spirit. Well, this is the same. When the Holy Spirit is there with us, we have the well that never runs dry. Amen. Amen. And so when you put that pail into the well, it takes some what? To get it up it takes some effort it takes some strength amen you have to do something right amen, amen. you got to draw the water up and you got to do something with it you might have to carry it somewhere you might have to pour it into another something amen but he's the well that's right there it never runs dry amen, amen. hallelujah <clears throat> so we have to expect that amen. amen and don't just run you know over to the uh you know the substitute to get the bottled water. Amen. Go to the real water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no substitution Hallelujah. for supernatural power from on high. Amen. 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 That's going to be fulfilling in our lives to accomplish his will. Amen. Amen. So this is the foundational. This is the foundational principle of a life in the spirit. Hallelujah. You'll not be able to walk in the fullness of God 
of what he has for your life, what he has planned for your life without walking with him in a supernatural way like this. Amen? Amen. Look at verse uh, 13. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? How many of y'all have been delivered from the power of darkness? Hallelujah. The word deliver there, it means to rush, to draw, and rescue. We've been rescued. Amen. Jesus sent his word and you heard it. And you've been rescued. If you, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can tonight. Amen. You're hearing the delivering truth right now. So it says here in verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we've been translated. Translated means remove, to put out, to turn away. So we've been removed from the kingdom of darkness, turning away from it. Everybody say, I'm turning away from the power of darkness. Because darkness has a power. Hallelujah. But he's got more power. Amen. And so we've turned into the kingdom of his dear son. If you've asked Jesus into your life, then you have been brought into this other kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. You've been translated, removed. Hallelujah. So we don't want to hold on to the power of darkness. And in this time of year, uh, people tend to value and even celebrate darkness and, and evil. And they might take it lightly, but it's not something to play with. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've been delivered from it. I mean, why go back and hold on to the chains that were pulling you into hell <laughs> you know pulling you down for the uh into the uh in you know when you're drowning because you you've got something weighting you down Amen. we've been delivered the chains have been cut I man don't reach down and grab the chain hallelujah let go of that thing amen, amen. why go back and resurrect the chains of bondage into our lives when we've been delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Colossians. Uh, now let's look at verse 18. <clears throat> Paul's teaching the, the, the church here. He says in verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. Hallelujah. Jesus is the head of the church. Say it with me. Jesus is the head of of the church. Now, when we're talking about walking in the spirit, we have to know who, who's the head, who, who is speaking into my life. Amen. Because the world has a voice. Hallelujah. That's uh, usually controlled by the powers of darkness. And so we have to turn that off and we have the the Holy Spirit, amen, that we need to listen to, and Jesus is directing amen. that, amen? amen. amen. So uh, he says that uh, Jesus, it says here, and he is the head of the body. So we have, to, we have to acknowledge that there is a body. Everybody say there's a body. And that body is the church. Say the body is the church. Now, the word church there, it is the uh, word ecclesia. It's a compound word of ek, and it means, uh, it means out of a place. That's ek, out of a place. And kaleo means bid or call. So literally, it means you've been called out. So you've been called out. You've been delivered. You've been uh, invited Amen. Into this place of supernatural knowledge, into the kingdom of his dear son. We've been delivered from the power of darkness. We've been snatched out, 
We've been called out. Amen. See, you have to see yourself this way. In order to walk in it, you have to see yourself this way. Because the world doesn't explain it that way. They can't explain it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Word does a pretty good job of it. Amen. We just have to see it for what it says. And we have to believe it by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. All right, so how do we, uh, how does the Lord speak to us? He speaks to us through his word, amen? He leads us by his word, right? He leads us by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is directing us uh, in uh, what we, you know, do and say and how we should think, amen? We guard our hearts and allow the Spirit to, to speak to us. Uh, he, he speaks to us through others, like you're here tonight yielding yourself. I'm just a vessel, so the Holy Spirit's just speaking. Amen. And uh, uh, there's others that the Lord has, you know, gifted to the body of Christ to speak and to pour out by the Spirit uh, life into the body. Your pastor being uh, a key. Amen. I love our pastor. Amen. This is an honor to be here tonight with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't our pastor good? Aren't our pastors good? Amen. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Amen. God is so good. And the Lord uses our pastors to speak to us. But you have to be willing. <laughs> You have to be willing to hear the Lord from the word and not just be like, well, I don't know about that yeah. and, and keep going. Amen? Amen? Or I don't understand that, so I don't have to receive it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hey, it, so it's the same when the Holy Spirit comes to you. See, if that's your kind of attitude about the things of God is, well, I just don't understand, so it's, it's, uh, it's okay. Hey, well, when the Holy Spirit starts to, to teach you directly through the Word and through His speaking and leading, like, we have to yield to that. Amen? We have to, uh, we have to yield to His voice and become familiar with that voice. Amen? Amen? Same with, with our pastors and, and people that are, that are here to, to speak to you by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yield to what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Come expecting for the Lord to, uh, to direct you in a way that you need to be directed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is the head. He's the head over all of it. Amen. So he's the head of the church, the called out ones. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 13, uh, we'll start in 12. So 12, 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, this is talking about the church, and there's many members in the church, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. So by the Holy Spirit, we're, we're saved. That's the baptism of salvation. We're saved and baptized into one body, one church. Amen? Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, uh, and have been all made to drink uh, into one spirit. Amen? So it doesn't matter where you came from, who, you, who brought you. Amen? What side of the river you grew up on. Amen? What country you're from what color you are. It doesn't matter. Amen. When you come into the body of Christ, we're one. Amen. Verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. So that's another thing. We have to see ourselves as one of many. And, and we're a member. That means a part of. Amen. And so a part, every part of your body is important. And so you have to see yourself as important to, if this is where you are, your, this is your body. You're important to this place. Yeah. 
You have to see yourself that way. This, we're talking about walking in the Spirit. If you don't see yourself as important in the body of Christ, then, uh, then, then it's going to be a challenge for you to line up with how the Lord is leading the church because this is how he leads the church, by the Spirit. Amen? Amen. So see yourself as a part of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 18. It says, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. Wow. So we have to see ourselves as being set in the body. Amen. Amen. Everybody say it with me. Say, I've been set, I've been set in, the body in the body as it pleased him. As it pleased him. Amen. So uh, it, it pleases him to set you. You know what it, the word set means? It means set. So he, he has put you in the body. Amen. Amen. So when you ask Jesus to come into your, your life, you give your life to him, you're set. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he will lead you to a, a local church body That's right. That's right. and set you there. Amen. Amen. That, that's uh, what we find. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you might be set here. And that's, that's good. You might not be set here. That's okay. You'll be hopefully set somewhere. You're welcome to become set here. There's a new members uh, 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 luncheon or, or meeting. They just talked, was it two weeks from now, two Sundays? You can, you can come. You don't, you don't have to agree to anything. Just come and hear what, what, what's being said. It's nothing but the word. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can be set, amen, uh, in a local church. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's where it pleases him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so this is, a, a, if you want to live in the life of the Spirit of God, this is the pattern. You can't change the pattern. It doesn't say where you want to Amen. and do what you want to. It says as it pleased him. Amen. Amen. That he does the setting. Amen. Amen. Verse 27, same chapter, chapter 12, verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Members in particular. That means we're the body of Christ. And uh, particular there means in a piece or portion or in a craft. Craft meaning uh, uh, you, have a, uh, you, you have a particular importance or craft. There's something that is on you. Everybody say, there's something on me, something on me. that the body needs. The body. See, we all need each other, just like you need every part of your body. Now, some of y'all might want to be getting rid of some of these parts. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we're not going to talk about that tonight, but we don't do that with the body of Christ because the Word says, and there's more Scripture in here, you can read it for yourself, those uncomely parts, we love it. We, we encourage them. We help them out. Amen. Amen. And we need them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. It says, follow after charity and desire spiritual what? Gifts. But rather that ye may prophesy. Hallelujah. Desire spiritual gifts. See, a, having a, a life in, in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, fellowshipping with the Lord, yeah. you have to desire that. You have to want to. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and it says here in uh, verse 1, it says, uh, f so, you know, chapter 13 is the, the love chapter, yeah. right? Above all, love never fails. So we know about love. Paul goes on in the next chapter and he says, he says, follow after charity or love. And he says, and desire spiritual gifts. So there's a place for walking in love. That's important. It's part of our spiritual walk. Sometimes people forget that. Amen. They get all spiritual, no love walk. 
Amen. It's a, there's a balance. I, Paul says right here, he says, he says it, follow after charity, follow after love. Amen. If you don't know what that defi- definition is, read chapter 13. It says, and desire spiritual gifts. So these, the things of the spirit, we, we need to have that desire in us in order to walk in the spirit. Yeah. Amen. So it's just a part of growing. Amen. We, we, have to, we have to grow in understanding of, well, what are these things that he's talking about, the gifts of the Spirit? We're actually not even going to have time to talk about all that tonight. But we're just laying a foundation of putting it a desire in you to stir it up. Amen? So it says, uh, but rather that ye may prophesy or simply meaning be led by the Spirit. Yeah. That's what a prophecy is. It's a word from the Lord. Verse 1, but rather that ye may follow the word of the Lord. Prophesy. Hallelujah. It's not saying that, well, everybody ought to be a prophet. Actually, if you're led by the Spirit, you are a prophet in a sense. You can be led to prophesy and to speak what God has to say. That's what I'm doing tonight. Amen. Amen. I didn't make this up. This is the Lord speaking through me, amen, by the Spirit, amen. So, husbands, you can prophesy to your wife. You can speak by the Spirit. Not, I'm not talking to be funny. I'm being serious, right? You can prophesy to your neighbor. It's by the Spirit. Make sure it's the Spirit. (laughs) This is what we're talking about, amen. We need to make sure that these things that we say are the Spirit. This is how the, the light on the, on the hill is, is supposed to work. Amen? Amen? We're supposed to be different than the world. Amen? Called out of darkness into this marvelous light. We're supposed to be different. How? Well, this is where the body of Christ has to kind of connect with the Spirit of Christ and learn how to work with and operate with the spirit cooperate amen hallelujah can't be the lone ranger you know praise the lord hallelujah so god has set us in the church in members in particular to uh, follow after charity desire spirit, spiritual gifts uh and and but rather that we are led by the spirit Amen. That's, that's what it means to prophesy, to be led by the Spirit. Verse 12, chapter 14. It says, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek ye, or seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So here he's doing all this teaching and he's taught, teaching them about this, the, the life of the Spirit. And he's saying in verse 12, even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts. So, okay, I see it. Now you get it. You're zealous. You, you want these spiritual gifts. That's great. What are they for? It says, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Amen. So what are they spiritual gifts for? To build up the church. Yeah. Edifying means to build up to create a, a edifice, a structure. Hallelujah. So every part, every member of the body of Christ has a function and a purpose. And when you walk in the spirit, it builds up that function and that purpose. Hallelujah. And, and that, that goes for every person in the room. Hallelujah. Every person that's joining us online, God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and it's to walk with him in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And what for? To build up the church. Hallelujah. To build up those that are called out. Amen. Amen. We said ecclesia, what the church was. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. 
Alleluia. Romans 12, verse 9. It says, Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I like verse 11. Not slothful. So uh, we're not supposed to be sloths. Amen. Slothful. Not to be, we're not supposed to be slothful. Well, what, is, what's, what does that mean? Diligent. It mean, the opposite of slothful is diligent and faithful. Amen. And it says in business. So uh, what, how about whatever we put our hands to do? Amen. Let's be diligent at what we do. Don't be slothful. Amen. It says fervent in spirit. Fervent. Praise the Lord. Uh, serving the Lord. So as the body of Christ, members in particular, we have the Holy Spirit to empower us, that equips us, and through our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is there to uh, empower us to serve him. Hallelujah. So you say, well, uh, I'm just here to get a message. I just want to hear what you have to say. That's true, and that's great. That's part of service is worship. You're here worshiping him, amen? But there's other parts of our worship that is other parts of service, amen? And uh, this is the life, this is the walk of a believer. This is the, the walk of someone being led by the Spirit. They're serving the Lord, amen? And not just in their own individual worship, but it, it serves each other. Every uh, part, every member has a function and a part in this body, amen? So we have to be, uh, we have to be fervent. We have to be uh, um, diligent, amen, hallelujah. So well, what, what distracts people into being slothful. Well, uh, it could be um, maybe their, their original nature. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and so the power of darkness has not, you know, loosened them, even though they've been set free. Amen. So we, that, that's a possibility. Uh, it could just be their own will is so strong because that's what the world tells us is is. Your will, amen, you uh, do what you want, when you want, amen, how you want. And, 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 but the word says to subject our will to his will, amen. So as a believer, as a Christian, we are to be receiving by the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the spirit-filled walk with him where he's leading us. And sometimes, you know, that's uh, not what we want. We might be faced with doing something we might not want to do or am comfortable doing. But this is not comfortable for me. I don't know if you can tell how awkward it is to do what I'm doing. Amen. And if it looks comfortable, it's only because I've been doing it a while. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but I'm here because I, it's, it's an honor to be here and to do this. Amen. I'm just yielding my will to his will. And, and he's just, you know, he's meeting you where you are around the room. Amen. So I, I, I see it. I see it. I know how it works because I've been doing this a long time. Amen. And, and the longer you uh, put your hand to something, you, you, you're going to get really efficient and effective at it too. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I didn't start off right here. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to talk about myself because I got to finish this word. Amen. Maybe later we'll testify. Praise the Lord. All right. So we have to be fervent and diligent. Uh, chapter 13. I'm just pulling out some key verses here. These will help you. Amen. Romans 13 and verse 11. Mm. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep 
For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. A believer who is born again and, and is submitting to the will of God is going to do this, verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means when you get up in the morning, put him on. Amen. And it says, don't make a provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, the flesh is there. Uh, as James said, bag of dirt or dirt bag, dirt bag. That's right. Not this James, the James that spoke this morning, the dirt bag. If you missed the message this morning, you'll have to go back and get the dirt bag message. Uh, but uh, but that's, that's the lust of the flesh, amen? But we don't have to pro provide for that. You don't have to. Praise the Lord. You, you, so it, that means Paul is telling us we can live in a place we can live in a state of mind whereby we are not regarding the flesh, but we're just regarding the spirit. Amen. 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 He wouldn't tell us if it wasn't true. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. It's high time. Thank you, Lord. So God wants to build a ministry out of us. Amen. And, uh, he has an office for each of us. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the Lord has an office for me. He has a function for me. Praise the Lord. That's the beginning. It's just knowing that God's got an office for me. Now, this, this was helpful to me. Uh, years ago, I heard this about the office. And uh, uh, when you've been given an office... That's your office. You can't just go and take on somebody else's office, right? That's not your office. This is your office. Go back to your office. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that office is for you. Hallelujah. So it's up to you to find out, well, what is it? What is the will of God? What is that function for me in the body? It's not up to the pastor. It's not up to your spouse or grandma or your mom it's up to you and the lord amen. the holy spirit will lead you and guide you amen? amen praise the lord glory to god are y'all with me tonight amen. so god wants to build a ministry and i'm not talking about you know a, a, a ministry with a business card i'm just talking about a means that, that the light is shining on the hill and the city uh, in your life. That, that's a ministry. When people see you and they see Christ, that's a ministry. When you speak and they know something's on that person different than the 10 other people in the room, something's different. That's a ministry. You're drawing people to Christ. That's the ministry. Amen. Amen. That's the ministry of reconciliation that it belongs to the church. And that's what's going to bring in this last day's revival Amen. and harvest. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, turn with me to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. And verse 10, it says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. So we have to be diligent about making sure of our calling, our, our function, our purpose. Make sure that we're diligent about that. And we, it's not just casual, oh, uh, yeah, I know, they need help, but I'm too busy. Busy with what? Praise the Lord. Now, let me tell you about your faith. 
So when you know what the will of God is, begin to use your faith to accomplish the will of God because the devil will bring busyness around. He will busy you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and all day Sunday. He will busy your busy day and your busy week and your busy month and he will be all busy up in your business. But use your faith, amen, to unbusiness your week. Use your faith and believe God. Just ask him and you will see miracles in your life. Just ask him, why would he withhold what his will is from you? <laughs> when he's graced us, he empowers us. Paul made it all the way to, to Rome by the grace of God. Shipwreck, snake bitten. I mean, by the grace of God, he made it all the way to Rome. We can make it through the mar, right? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. By his grace, by his, uh, uh, his, his, uh, the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Amen. We can do this. We can serve him. We can find out what his will is for our life. We can find that place and we can be, we can, we can use our faith to be good at it. Amen. We can use our faith to, to excel. That's, the, these are the words from the word. It, I didn't, this is all my words. The word said excel. Paul said excel. The Holy Spirit is telling the church to excel. Be fervent. Be diligent. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God blesses what we put our hands on in the kingdom. Amen. This is our ministry. Amen. This is what your ministry is. What you have your hands on in the ministry that the Spirit has told you to do. He's going to bless it. If you're diligent, if you're faithful, amen, if you use your faith for that area, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. One more scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Second Timothy 1, 6 says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. See, fear is what keeps people from walking in the spirit. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Fear is what keeps people from walking in the spirit. Their own mind prevents them from walking in the thing that God has called them to do. But he says here, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us, a, he's given us power. He's given us power over that fear. He's given us power and of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. So verse 6, Paul is there just saying... Uh, to Timothy, he's saying, I, just remember, everybody say remember, remember, to stir up the gift of God. Stir up the gift. You might be in service, you know, working in, your hand is on that plow. And so, um, so I, I've, I grew up on a farm. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't plow with my hands, but I drove the tractor. And uh, in driving that thing, you can get sleepy after a while you know, come three, four hours into the day. Now, here we go. We eat some peanut butter crackers and four and five, five and six hours into the day, and you're going up and down the same field. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, the lines start to get like this, and, there's, and Grandpa drives by, and he's like, what's going on over here? <laughs> ah, sorry. Praise the Lord. You got to be diligent when your hand's on the plow. Amen. Amen. Remind yourself. This is all that Paul is saying. He's reminding Timothy, uh, stir up the gift of God. Everybody say, I'm going to stir up the gift, stir up the gift. That's, in me. that's in me. So the, the, uh, the Lord put the gift in you. He put the calling on you. Every, it, it, it's applicable to everybody. Everybody has a function. You need to find what does God have for you to do. Amen. It's going to be something in the body. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask everybody to stand with me. Paul, so the, our, the thing that God has called us to, Paul even said, he said, I magnify my office. He, he's, he's putting a spotlight on it. It's important. It's, it's significant. It's not something to consider lightly. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And uh, so tonight, in closing, I, I want to give everybody an opportunity. There might be somebody in the room or joining us online. You've never asked Jesus to come into your life. And this would begin a life of walking in the Spirit. First, by accepting Christ into your life and being pulled out of the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So we want to give you that opportunity. I want to ask everybody in the room, just lift your hands and let's pray this together. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I thank you for Jesus Christ who died for my sins that I can be delivered from the power of darkness and brought into the kingdom of Jesus. And Father, I receive now this deliverance and salvation by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If that was you tonight and you um, prayed that for the first time, would you just be bold, raise your hand. We just want just to acknowledge um, you in the room, anybody in the room tonight, you raise your, raise your hand. No. All right. You might be joining us online. Just let us know. Otherwise, um, those of you that are in the room tonight, I do feel that there are some that, um, the Lord would, uh, he's, he's saying yes, uh, to you that you have, uh, not been understanding of what is required of you as a believer and and you you've heard it and now you're ready to say to take the first step yes you're just acknowledging that that you have heard the lord and you want to to take a step in that direction of uh of of hearing the call and then and then uh going toward you know you can't excel without taking a step so taking a step toward excellence. It, it starts with a step. Amen. Um, so there might be somebody in the room tonight and we'll just do this right where you are, but I do want to see, is there anybody just raise your hand? You want to take a step? I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else? We want to take a step. Thank you. See all those hands to your hand. Amen. So stirring up the gift, there might be others in the room. You, you're stirring up, you're ready to stir up the gift. And you say, yes, the Lord spoke to me tonight. I, I need to do this over here. Like, you, you know, or I need to do this or I need to do that or I need to stop doing that. Amen. So that's how the Lord leads us. Amen. If that was you, raise your hand. Be bold. Be bold. You got to take these steps. Amen. Remember, uh, <laughs> he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Amen. And so fear will keep you in the same place <laughs> and not excelling. Amen. Hallelujah. He's given us boldness and we have to, we have to shake off that spirit of fear. So let's just do this. Lift our hands. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I'll not be moved by fear. I shake it off in Jesus name. I have a sound mind. I'm walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I receive now the gifts and callings that you have for me on my life. I thank you, Lord, for stirring up those gifts, making them, ele uh, making them, uh, thank you, Lord, making them evident in my life, in Jesus' name. I'll be faithful. I'll be diligent as I walk in your power, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, y'all are dismissed.